a very long line for a Livraia Lello. You can buy your tickets online. My first tip is to try to visit the Livraia Lello in the afternoon. There tends to be shorter lines because in the morning everyone thinks, oh, it's early, no one will be there. But then everyone shows up very early, so it's usually walk-in times later in the afternoon. However, the line moves very fast regardless. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me quite a flight. So now let's go in for a serene tour of the Livraria Lello. Do you know that feeling when you step into a bookstore or library and it's just an amazing kind of smell in the air and you can't wait to just see the possibilities of all the books and read them all around you? But that usually happens at a local Barnes and Nobles. Well, take that feeling and multiply it by one million and your heart feels like it's soaring in here and you step back in time to this beautiful building. I mean, the architecture is absolutely stunning. Livraria Lello was built over a century ago in 1906, back when they made cool things like this. I mean, this building is so cool compared to usual like, modern buildings that you see with like sleek glass and it really feels like you are stepping into a Wizarding World-esque environment and it makes me want to just read and read. And I make children's books and I'm currently writing a novel so one of my big dreams one day is to have a book published and I can't imagine what it must feel like to have a book in here. It's an absolutely stunning space. The other tip to know is when you do buy a ticket online, you're going to get a code with it and that will be a voucher for whatever book you choose to pick out. So it will be a discount off the book's price. If you want to see this really cool glass windows, stay glass. And this is a dope triangle light. <laughs> you have to pay admission, it's 8 euro. But uh, it goes towards the cost of a book if you decide to buy one. And the books here are around 16 euro to, I don't know, it just keeps going up. Uh, but it doesn't count towards things like notebooks and tote bags. Those are extra, but they're really cute. It's definitely good if you're already planning to buy a book on your trip to Porto anyways. If you want to skip the line and have priority entry, you can even reserve a book and a ticket voucher in advance for 1590 euros. This is a great option if the line is really long and you're looking to do a lot of sightseeing this day. However, the book selection that comes with Ticket Voucher Gold is pretty limited compared to the wide variety of Livario Lello special editions they have in the library itself. So if you're like me and you really wanted some different title, it might be worth it to just wait in line to buy the title you're looking for. I also brought my travel sketchbook on my first visit to Livario Lello because I love to sketch my surroundings and draw them. It's a really great way for me to remember and commemorate these places that I get to see. And also it really introduces another mode of seeing where you're looking very intensely at something and when you're drawing it's almost like seeing something for the first time but a second time and a third and a fourth time as you keep looking and iterating on the drawing. The Livrario Lello is so beautiful that I thought it would be a wonderful place to draw for a little bit. I'll show some pictures of what the library looked like back when it opened. It's a very Harry Potter feeling, even though it's not at all connected to Harry Potter. They do sell the books here too, downstairs. And just when you think this place couldn't get any better, they also have special rotating exhibits to celebrate the history of different authors and the history of the Livrario Lello itself. So if you like Le Petit Prince or The Little Prince, they had an exhibit with the author's bracelet that they found in the sea, which I found was very fascinating. And they also have a special Livario Lello edition of The Little Prince, so it ties it into the bookstore and history. Upstairs you'll find the first cash register used here and it's really interesting because it really brings you back in time to when that photo was taken that I showed earlier. They also had a special exhibit for Jose Saramago, a writer who won the Nobel Prize in Literature. They had artifacts from his life and his time writing and I think it's very cool that they highlight different writers here and really celebrate the craft and the art of writing. And it makes your exhibit more educational too. You can learn something about Portuguese history as well. So I really enjoyed that they had this up. I think this is the only bookstore I've ever paid to enter, but it is kind of like a museum in a way. Um, if Barnes and Noble charged admissions, they would never close the stores. This is pretty fun. Wait, what is that Jabberwocky? That looks really cute. Yeah, 
my issues. There's no way I'm putting this in my one backpack on the way home. So uh, maybe I'll get in a bridge version. This is the iconic red staircase that you see in all the vlogs, basically. <laughs> so crowded. If you're also looking for more fun things to do and awesome day trips on your trip to Portugal, be sure to check out my Portugal playlist at the end of this video. If they wanted to save all the bookstores in the world, you just have to make them very Instagrammable and suddenly people are very interested in buying books and seeing books and being in a place that smells like a bookstore. I think I've decided on the Peter Rabbit compendium. I actually already have two sets of these, but this one's just extremely beautiful. They have a lot of Librario level um, editions here. And I absolutely love Beatrix Potter. She's my favorite children's book author. So I think I'm going to pick up this collection. There's a lot of cute things here. You can see it. They're in different editions in different languages. So here we have like Alice in Wonderland in French. And um, just these beautiful editions and covers. And these actually have color illustrations in them, which I thought was very pretty as well. When you visit Livrayalelo, good luck trying to find just one book that you want to take home because you're going to want to take home a bunch of books. I came in here not expecting to buy anything and leaving with much self-restraint, one book of the Peter Rabbit. But uh, they're also beautiful and they have a lot of editions and a lot of different languages. If you're a reader or you know a reader, this is a wonderful place to get gifts as well. This is the most beautiful bookstore in the world, so to have something from here is a great way to commemorate your trip to Portugal. I want to show you around a bit more. I really felt as though I had stepped into almost a movie set back in time. I get to live out some very lavish dream of being in some very wealthy person's library or something like that. It just feels almost like a palace in a way. Um, I majored in English at Berkeley and I really enjoyed being in here with books. So it made me want to read a whole lot more than I do right now. And the hardest thing about being an English major is uh, not telling people that you're an English major all the time. So, so I just had to slip that in there. I think that's a wrap. It's absolutely stunning in here, as you can see, and it's pretty busy as well. I think my family is kind of bored. I don't think they're that into books. I majored in English, so I could probably stay here all day just hanging out, but uh, it might be time to go soon. It's so pretty. It was rumored that J.K. Rowling was inspired by this bookstore to write um, and for the look and feel of Harry Potter, but it's not true. She actually tweeted that she's never been here before, even though she was teaching English here in Porto. She was inspired by the fountain across the street. If you look at it closely, it looks like the Gryffindor logo uh, for the Gryffindor house, which is pretty cool. And she does wish that she had seen this library, and it is very Harry Potter-esque, so a lot of Harry Potter tours come here, and it's definitely a must-see when you visit Porto. Thanks y'all for watching. We stopped by, of course, to get some ice cream at the end of a great day. And I hope you had a great time watching this. Please let me know a book that you'd recommend in the comments below. I'm looking for new books to read this year. And have a good one. Stay sweet. To help support this channel, I create coloring books and children's books about food and de-stressing. And here's a little flip through of my cottagecore coloring book. I've always wanted to be an author and an illustrator and I'm making these series of coloring books so people can really de-stress and relax. I know life gets kind of stressful and busy and chaotic and this is a great activity book for that. I love to get colored pencils out and color so I thought I'd make my own coloring book especially for people who love cottage core and just cute little animals and scenes so, so that's my shameless plug of my work here. I also have this book out. Japanese ABCs, which is more food based because judging by this video, my note surmise that I really love food and <laughs> I also like trying to learn other languages and this is my one for Japanese language learning. So, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, stay sweet out there.